Hello, good morning. I'm Christine and, and Julien. And um, we wanted to talk to you today a little bit about um, the journey that Firmanish has done with um, our digital lab. And uh, for the students in the audience, I hope we can give you a little bit of an idea of what we do in an industrial machine learning lab. And uh, the, for the industry people, maybe we can give you some ideas of the, what was contributed so far to our success. So first, we'll start with a little introduction for each of our companies. All right, so good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Julien. I work at Unitate. And uh, our mission is really to, uh, <clears throat> to accelerate the adoption of data science, data engineering in the industry. We work with multiple clients, but Firmanish is one of them, and we have uh, had a long partnership with them. Uh, so I'm very happy to be here to talk about, uh, about some of that. And uh, yeah, the company was founded in 2017. We are now about uh, 85 people. We have a booth upstairs, so don't hesitate to come and say hello. Yeah, and now a little bit about Firmanish, um, what we do. We are a business to business uh, company. That means we interact with other businesses who then sell their products to clients. Um, we have four divisions and we use machine learning in each of these divisions. So we have a perfumery division, um, in, in, an ingredient division, taste and beyond, as well as a R and D research division. And just to give you a little bit of an idea of the products we make, uh, we sell fine fragrances. Uh, the classic fine fragrances that you might know, which are uh, from Gucci or Calvin Klein. We sell also to niche brands. We sell, and we do things that are upcoming for the, the next season. Uh, we also do consumer fragrances. Um, this might be a little bit interesting to people. We, sell, we make the fragrances that you find in shampoos, lotions, hand lotions, soaps, um, detergents as well as things like, uh, which is quite big now, candles, room fragrances. We also do flavors. Um, and these, we find the flavors in all sorts of different types of products, um, even in um, the plant-based proteins. And, and this is where we've had some success recently. We, we've developed an AI flavor, uh, beef flavor for plant-based proteins. And that's gotten quite some big press. It's been advertised on the BBC and things like that. So we're quite uh, pleased with that success. But what we're really here to tell you about is how we do this at the D-Lab, our digital lab. A little bit of history is that before we started the D-Lab, our machine learning efforts were sort of distributed across the company, which made it difficult to industrialize and put these things, the, our models, into production. But people have, um, our management had the great idea to centralize this. And we, so we've centralized it here at the um, EPFL. We have uh, our offices at the EPFL on the, in the Innovation Park. And this has allowed us to have um, access to academics, to students, to, and just expand our network in machine learning. Um, and this then has become the sort of our driver of digital creations for, uh, for Manish. And uh, now we're able to, like I said, deliver these uh, new AI tools to do uh, specific creative things for our company. Right, so uh, since this is a machine learning conference, we also want to uh, tell you a little bit about the types of data that we work with uh, pretty much every day at the D-Lab. So um, at the core of this creation process for perfumes and flavors, uh, there are formulas, and formulas, you can think of, the, of them as like uh, recipes. They contain different ingredients in different amounts, different quantities, and they have uh, specific properties. So obviously, for instance, what they smell is interesting for perfumes or what they taste, uh, but also things like how much CO CO2 they emit uh, to, be, to be made, uh, how much they cost, or for instance, uh, how likely are certain uh, subset of consumers to appreciate them, for instance. And then really creation is all about iterating on those formulas and trying to find the best possible combination of ingredients um, with, with the best properties, also taking into account a few other constraints. 
like uh, business constraints, things like consumer preferences or client requirements, uh, or also what the supply chain can provide, but also things like regulations in different regions. Um, and finally, the ingredients are really the building blocks of those formulas. They also have interesting properties on their own. Uh, some are made of single molecules, other are natural ingredients made of several molecules. Uh, they have different properties like yeah, how, how, they, how much they cost, how biodegradable they are, etc. And um, so uh, there, there is quite a lot of uh, data because the company has been around for more, a bit more than 125 years. Um, so there is quite a bit to learn from. And yeah, basically to summarize, uh, it's a mix of uh, fairly high dimensional objects for the formulas that contains this sort of uh, discrete building blocks, the ingredients, but also in uh, the data is also continuous in the sense that the, the quantities can also be seen as sort of continuous. This is the data we work on. And uh, to give you um, <clears throat> a few examples of what do we do with this data, um, one of the fairly important use cases is um, basically generating new formulas. So here, um, this takes place early in the creation process. This is really to provide new starting points to the creators, the perfumers or the flavorists, uh, so that they can quickly answer the needs of, uh, of clients. Uh, pretty obviously, I think also we do predictions. So basically, this is to guide the creation process. Um, it takes a lot of time to make a perfume and to smell it when you know it's being created. So here we can sort of give a little cockpit to the creators and tell them uh, while they are creating, you know, what are the properties of the formulas that they are working on. <clears throat> um, formula optimization is also very interesting. It goes a little bit in the reverse direction. So there we know the properties we want the formula to have. For instance, um, you know that we want it to be uh, a bit more liked, for instance, by certain consumers in certain regions. There we build models that will tell us uh, how to modify an existing formula, either an existing product or a product that is being created to make it better uh, in terms of these different criteria. And then after we have all these formula, we have a massive uh, database or mass massive catalog of formula, we need to go through them and tell our internal people which one, are, which one is best for which client. So in this case, we need to build um, recommendation engines. We have built recommendation engines to recommend a specific uh, formula for a specific client. And then as well, we have to build systems that can allow easy search and, and um, to find, just to be able to go through them in a very fast and efficient way. And finally, final uh, example is uh, about ingredients. So it's not all about formulas. Uh, we also build models to uh, find better molecules uh, or new molecules and also, for example, optimize the, the synthesis of molecules. Yes, yeah, so we wanted to then tell you a little bit about what we've learned on this journey. And one thing that we found is we needed to invest in infrastructure. Infrastructure was key to make to our success because we had to um, compile the data because we have been around for a long time, so 125 years, you can imagine that there is a lot of legacy data and needs to be compiled to get it to the, the data scientists so that they can do their machine learning. We have to package the, the model afterwards, and then we have to deploy it and deploy it worldwide since we have uh, affiliates uh, in China, Europe, uh, North America, South America. And so this is actually that the, the message is that most of the time is spent on engineering. Uh, well, only 25% of the time is spent on machine learning. And of that 25%, 50% is talking to the business to understand what the data is about, and 50% is actually building the models. So this, it really was key to invest in this infrastructure so that we can uh, make the process more efficient. All right, um, we also try to um, distill what here we called pillars of success. Um, so uh, some of that we have also seen uh, as Unitate working also with other customers, you know, some of the key uh, driver, drivers of success. And the first one, which is, uh, I guess, uh, obvious, 
is people and culture. So when we do data science, um, we cannot really do it in a waterfall sense because there, in data science there is science. So basically, you know, we make hypotheses, we try to validate or invalidate them, and then sometimes we fail or you know we have to accept the results, whatever they are. Uh, so it takes people who are okay to fail, who are really open-minded, accept the results, whatever they are, uh, and obviously also agile. So you cannot really have you know a six-month plan for what your machine learning model will, will do, right? Um, interaction with the business also super critical. Um, we think that it's uh, fairly easy to build great machine learning models that uh, at the end no one will ever use because maybe they don't really solve exactly the right problems that the users care about or problems like that. Um, so the way this is uh, addressed at the D-Lab is by building um, fairly small teams that are cross-disciplinary, so they contain technical people, uh, but they also contain uh, business stakeholders that are included in the discussions from day one. And then as well, you need the skills, um, which means that well, we all use reusable parts, right? Uh, data scientists work with reusable things. And if uh, you don't understand how those reusable parts were built, if you don't have the fundamentals, then it can be quite difficult to go back and track back to the issue if there is one within one of those parts that we were using. So that's, that's one of the things we found was really important for our success, as well as tech is important. We all love we you all love tech and that's why we're here. But uh, we use um, n deep neural networks when it makes sense. But if it makes sense to solve the problem with logistic regression, we'll do that too. So tech is not an end in itself. And then finally, we would say it's a balancing act. In this part of our success in the D Lab has become be, is because. We have taken projects that are low-hanging fruit, that we can give the results that the business wants, but as well as we base our, our, some of our work on really the moonshots where it will be uh, incredible, if, incredible success if, if, if it succeeds, although they're risky. So it's really a balancing act to have some of both types of projects. And this could never be done without a, you know, a, a big team. And this is part of the team that we have in the D-Lab, but it's even wider than this, actually. We have even more people on the infrastructure side, other people in firm niche. We have the support of management. So it's really a big, it's a big team that's all behind uh, the work that we do in the D-Lab. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have maybe time for one question, if there's a question to, yeah. Very interesting talk, thank you. Um, I have a question because we at Lonza are also um, uh, confronted with a very, very similar problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, I'm just wondering why did you go the way um, of of a public cloud and not um, on-prem servers and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, we we started with um, we started on-prem. It's true. Th this is the way we originally started it. But um, infrastructure, you know, probably is difficult. And what we found is going to Azure and using it a public cloud is we have a lot of the services there that we could just make use of quite easily and uh, manipulate a lot of more things more easily by using their service than rather trying to recruit people on-prem that maybe don't yet have the skills to help us. So that's why we did it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Good. You. Thank you very much.